Hey you! In a previous video we talked about what investor state dispute settlement are and you probably heard about the big investor state dispute settlements in the news where a multinational company is suing a country for billions of dollars. Which has to be paid in the end with the taxes that the citizens have to pay, right? Let me give you a short overview of some of the big state dispute settlements and, and let's discuss if companies should have the possibility to sue a government. In my video about the German businessman trying to sue the Russian Federation, I think we are all on the side of the small businessman, right? But what do you think about these cases? ExxonMobil vs Venezuela In 2007, the parliament of Venezuela decided to nationalize all petrol related projects and businesses. This also impacted oil giants like BP, Chevron, Total and ExxonMobil. For ExxonMobil, this meant the failure of the Cerro Negro project. Venezuela paid for the disappropriation of ExxonMobil 900 million US dollar. But ExxonMobil demanded about 10 billion US dollar as compensation. In 2012, Venezuela resigned their membership of the International Center for Settlement of Investment Dispute. However, as the dispute settlement was already ongoing, the International Center of Settlement of Investment Disputes awarded ExxonMobil in the case the company had brought forward against the Venezuelan government 1.6 billion in October 2014. ExxonMobil alleged that the Venezuelan government illegally expropriated its Venezuelan assets in 2007 and paid unfair compensation. The ICSID however said the expropriation is valid but the sum that Venezuela paid before was a little bit too low. The fair amount should be at 1.6 billion. Vattenfall versus Germany. In 2010, the German government amended the Atomic Energy Act and extended the runtime for the nuclear power plants in Germany for a few years. After the Fukushima nuclear disaster in Germany, however, the government decided in June 2011 to revoke the concessions for nuclear power plants in Germany, which also reduced the runtime up to latest by 2022. After that, all nuclear power plants in Germany have to be shut down. Because of that, the biggest utility companies raised a constitutional complaint against the decisions as well as opening an investor state dispute settlement. The total sum in controversy was amounted to 4.7 billion plus additional interest of 4% above the reference interest rates, which will add another few hundred millions each year. As the documents for this settlement are not public, it's not exactly clear on which rules Vattenfall suit the German government. The most likely are the fair and equitable treatment standard and the liability of compensation for indirect expropriation. In March 2021, the
the involved ministries announced they reached an, an agreement with Vattenfall. In the end, Germany paid about 1.425 billion to Vattenfall. And the German government paid around 22 million every year for lawyers and the personnel working in the ministries on this specific case. Philip Morris vs. Uruguay As you can see with this case, the big companies are not always the winner of investor state dispute settlements. One famous example of when a multinational company lost is the Philip Morris against Uruguay settlement. This is also used as an example of an investor state dispute settlement excess, meaning overusing the settlement system and trying to abuse the options of settlements. Philip Morris was heavily criticized for picking a rather small country, which might have been easy to win against, to make an example for other countries like Indonesia, not to implement measurements to reduce the tobacco consumption. But what happened? So after some tax cuts and cutting import fees for Philip Morrison, the Uruguayan government tightened the tobacco laws to reduce the consumption of cigarettes and tobacco products. This included having bigger health warnings on the package, but also allowing every tobacco brand just to sell one type of cigarette, raising taxes, but also banning sponsorships and advertising. Based on the bilateral investment treaty between Switzerland and Uruguay, Philip Morris tried to sue Uruguay for 25 million US dollars based on violating their protection of investments as well as their intellectual property. In the beginning, Philip Morris considered to sue for about 2 billion US dollars, which would have been around a sixth of the annual national budget of Uruguay. During the settlement process, Philip Morris closed down its factory in Uruguay, as well as firing 40 employers. After six years, they lost the settlement, meaning they had to pay the judicial expenses of about 7 million US dollars of Uruguay, as well as the administrative expenses for the arbitration. So here we are, three examples of when a multinational company opened an investor state dispute settlement. One time the company won, one time it was dismissed and one time there was a settlement between the state and the companies and the state is still paying a hefty amount of money to the company. What do you think about dispute settlement now? Is this something which is abused by these giant conglomerates to make even more money or is it a valid vehicle to protect ownerships? Let me know in the comments below and also what other dispute settlements you have heard of. Please also like the video and subscribe and consider watching my other videos. And I'll see you in the next one.